think of Goat Island as a meeting place of uh, different aspects of reality that don't normally come together in a conventional language. Goat Island was a performance art ensemble that was working in Chicago from about 1987 until 2009. They made nine complete works of art. We uh, think of ourselves as constructing. It, in, in a way, the opposite of deconstruction. If you were to see a Goat Island performance, you would think it sometimes feels like theater and sometimes feels like dance, sometimes feels like visual art and is sort of working around the expansion of all of these ideas. But in particular, it's live work with a performing body, a person right in front of you, dealing with information that came from an artist in the company or in the organization's own history, but also things that were happening at the time, issues that they were concerned with in the city, nationally and globally. Yes, Ms. Rittner. I would like to add that by consulting the client, we wish to create a positive future for them. Therefore, it is not favorable to put the what would happen if question in the future. Goat Island spent a long time developing work. In the duration of the two years that work is being made, they're teaching, they're doing other kinds of offshoots that feed into the understanding of the work, that develop the work further, and also really create the sense that this exhibition is also trying to create, which is the expansiveness. That it's not just a moment in time, it's a moment in time that, to use some of Aaron Manning's language, seeds other moments in time. It's 10 years since Goat Island made its last performance, and a number of us had had the idea that it was about time to start reflecting on what Goat Island was and how it situates in relation to the world of performance art and dance and theatre too, but also what its legacy is within the art strain of Chicago. One of the things that I've been very passionate about in the creation of the exhibition is being able to advance the archive as a resource, not only to researchers, but to Chicago. The archive is actually housed by the Library and Special Collections at the School of the Art Institute, and so the boxes that you see in the exhibition are actually where all the paper material is held. Because they started in 1987 and they end in 2009, a lot of the technology really changes over that period of time. Some of the artists that I think Goat Island was sort of carrying the banner for were expanding the ideas of virtuosity so that one doesn't have to be a prima ballerina to be a great dancer. And that in some ways the world around us is interesting and aesthetic and when framed through an artistic experience it allows us a sort of entry point into it or a criticality into it that we might otherwise miss. A question Please. It was always very clear to me that the nature of Goat Island's creative output was always about response. So it was always pretty clear to me that the curatorial plan needed to be like a series of responses. We took the form of Goat Island, which was basically the nine works that they produced over 23 years, and built the idea of a series of nine invitations to nine new artists who would respond each to one of those works looking for the kind of live elements to be the main focus and to also bring the archive to the public in a way that demonstrates it as a kind of living entity. There are actually nine performances so there are nine sections. One by one those get drawn down, the material that's in the packing cases gets unpacked and displayed. There is this staged moment from each of the performances using the props and costumes that were in the performance. So it's almost like you could walk in and see this three-dimensional snapshot of a moment in the performance. 
There's this idea that you will walk into the exhibition and immerse yourself in the material at any stage. And as you walk past the timeline, there are things on the timeline that say things like the first Starbucks in Chicago or when was Facebook first launched? And so everybody has a relationship to those things. An audience member watching a Goat Island piece actually completes the piece. One of the interesting ideas that comes out of Goat Island is the way in which the work invites response. There's this idea, very simply, that there's nothing terribly complicated to understand about the work of Goat Island. You already know what it is. You hear people often talking about a sense of confusion, like, what is this I'm looking at? Why don't I understand it? It's because they come in with an expectation that they're going to be given directives for all of the things they need to know to understand the work, which is pretty much the traditional mode of most theatre. What's significant about Goat Island is there are ideas that are extracted out of the lived experience and then represented through a series of performance layers so that what you see is completely removed from actually its original context. It has this ongoing kind of rich contextual framework because we all live in a very pragmatic sense through our very small acts and our very small sets of experiences that build to create the people that we are. Now, let's talk about something that's easy to understand. There's an ethic around the way that they structure performance and the way that they worked collaboratively, sort of carrying the banner of these historic collaborative art movements that came out of the 60s, that if you could build a, an equitable, collaborative, careful space with five performers and a hundred audience members, that there might be some small moment where you could take that into your everyday life. Each of the Goat Island works was conceived around the idea of the kind of performance space. Behind us you see this sort of gymnasium-like space. It's meant to represent the Wellington Avenue Church Gymnasium where Goat Island rehearsed and performed. Two. There was this moment when we learned we were going to be able to be in the Yates and the Exhibition Hall and we realized that the Wellington Avenue Church Gymnasium would fit inside this room. So that sort of started the idea that maybe we could build this ghost of this space. And then Brian Sainer, who's a former Goat Island member, suggested making this palimpsest on the ceiling, this idea of writing over. So each of the playing spaces or the floor plans of each of the nine performances are sort of hanging from the ceiling. And there are these sort of ways in which the time is sort of folded over itself. Each of the performances have a very specific playing space or floor plan. And I think those were thought of as sites in trying to challenge the idea of can site specificity be pulled into a theater and still have a similar sort of experience that we might have if we were to see something outside on the street. Everybody has used the space very differently. Hancock and Kelly actually used the entire space from end to end and the audience could move around a little bit. Another performer, Robert Walton from Australia, taking the original floor plan that's in the palimpsest, just performed directly underneath that in a square for a piece called Exhuming Johnny that in many ways attempted to recreate segments of the original performance as a means to time travel back to 1991 when the performance happened. The exhibition ends with a three-day convening that actually includes what has been referred to as the 10th performance or the missing performance. And we honestly don't know at this point the shape of that. The full title of the exhibition is The Goat Island Archive. We have discovered the performance by making it. And we took that as the task or the prompt for the exhibition overall. So in some ways, we've discovered the exhibition by making it and the convening at the end will invite the folks who attend to be curious and to meet each other in a different way than we maybe normally do in these kind of settings. I think we've all built a new kind of comfort with the discomfort of not knowing. 
for me, in the world that we live in, that's a pretty useful skill.